Jesse Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Narrative Podcast. The Narrative Podcast is the home for original people, original people peace, original reciprocity, and original people positivity. The Narrative Podcast promotes positive self images about original people and original people culture. Welcome to the Narrative Podcast, and I'm your host, Halsey Allen. Welcome all my narrators. <clears throat> all right. So first and foremost, I got to apologize um, for the uh, broadcast this weekend. A whole lot of it was inaudible. Uh, I caught myself trying to take advantage of the nice weather and I like I was outside and it was just, yeah, it did not work at all. Like there was like a whole lot of feedback in the microphone, just, you know, I know you guys kept hearing the brushing sound. I kept on hearing the brushing sound. I think it was like the wind hitting the mic. But, um, yeah, it, my bad. Sorry about that. So, lesson learned. <laughs> so, we just broadcast from the uh, spot we've been uh, doing the uh, uploads and, um, Maybe not so much on outdoors, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was just jacked up from the beginning because I uh, posted, I uploaded, like, or I started uh, recording way later than I usually record, and then it didn't get uploaded till like after midnight, so yeah, my bad. But um, welcome you all, welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Got a pretty good show uh, lined up for you guys this evening. A um, lot going on in the world, a lot of things to address. Um, spoiler alert, <laughs> got to address the uh, elephant in the room once again. But um, that's a little later on. But uh, got some good positive content for you before we get to that. And um, yeah. So, you know, here we go during the weekday, during this uh, wonderful Wednesday. It's hump day. Weekend's right around the corner. We progressing, we learning, we growing, we building. That's what we do here on the Narrative Podcast, all my listening audience. You know, they've been rocking with me. Hopefully I've been projecting that type of energy to resonate with you to, you know, grow, build, and learn. Expand, broaden your horizons, and ultimately change the narrative in your world. But um, yeah, I just like to uh, you know, try to get interpersonal with the uh, listening audience before I dive right on into the content. Um, my narrative, my uh, regular regular listening audience. My narrators, they already know what my podcast is about and my format in which I deliver it. Um, and, um, you know, so they're very familiar. They already know uh, the deal. But um, how I usually start things off for people unfamiliar with me in my podcast, I just give a, a brief overview of the narrative podcast and um, all the misnomers about it you should know as a listener before diving into the content. So here we go right into it. The synopsis of the narrative podcast starting at the top, Tippy, the name. The name was inspired... Um, by, uh, you know, the uh, mainstream um, liberal media, because I started this um, thing during uh, pandemic lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, when you're by yourself that long, you just kind of notice things. And I noticed, you know, the way the media was portraying our people, 
and I don't like it. So to counter that, I, I created a platform. This platform, the narrative podcast, um, to counter how we're being portrayed in the media and perceived by people outside of our culture because of the way we're portrayed in the media. So it was my intent to basically design a platform to um, uplift and edify our people um, in the way in which you know, I chose the uh, course of action. I chose to do that is by providing, um, you know, positive self images or promoting uh, positive self images about our people and our culture to counter the way the uh, media, um, you know, intentionally misappropriates our images and our likenesses to. Um, push their agenda. So having said that, I think that's a perfect segue to my tagline for my podcast, the narrative podcast, changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying uh, negative stereotypes about original people and original people culture. How do I destroy the negative stereotypes about our people and our culture? By providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. And that's entirely what the narrative podcast is about and entirely what it's dedicated to on this platform um, and providing uh, positive frames of reference about our people and our culture and, um, you know, promoting uh, positive self-talk, promoting positive images and likenesses about our people and our culture. you know, in uh, bringing awareness and um, bringing awareness and also uh, trying to encourage and inspire the listening audience to do the same thing I'm doing, which is to cha- change the narrative, change, you know, how our people are being uh, perceived and um, how we're being uh portrayed in the media by just, you know, responsibly utilizing your uh, platforms to share positive images and our likenesses about our people and our culture. So, you know, that's pretty much the uh, gist of the narrative podcast, you know, the mission statement anyways. Um, So another thing about, you know, this platform So another thing about this platform is that um, uh, I refer to our target listening audience as my narrators. Um, I refer to our target listening audience as my narrators because, um, you know, we're living in the digital information age and we virtually just... um, share information online, you know. Every uh, digital platform has a a section where you can upload content, and the uh, content that you upload is usually, like, before you start uploading content, whenever you start a page. Um, The section usually starts with your bio, and then you tell people, you know, whatever you want to tell people about yourself, And then once you have your page established, then you start uploading um, content to, you know, be reflective of your bio. Some of us, you know, are a little bit more forthcoming and honest than others. But, you know, whatever you can basically my point is you can present yourself in uh, whatever manner you wish to present yourself online. You can make yourself be whatever you want to be. And usually a person's goal is to, you know, share their best, uh, the best possible uh, image of themselves online. They want to present themselves to the world in the best possible um, light they possibly can. They want to upplay, you know, everything they're interested in, um, you know, everything they believe in, 
you know, turn ons, turn offs. So in essence, they're telling or narrating their own stories. And when they're narrating their own stories, they do it from a, a positive space. Not too many people, you know, get online and uh, paint the worst possible picture they can of themselves, intentionally anyway. You know, some people just, you know, they got like happy fingers when they're uploading. They don't really mull over their content before they share it, you know, because everything ain't everybody's business. But yeah, essentially, mostly for the mo most part, people um, try to uh, tell or narrate their stories, making themselves be the hero and not the uh, villain in that situation. So that's what we have to do as a people. That's what I try to uh, promote here on this platform and inspire my listening audience to do my narrators to tell the best possible story about themselves they can possibly tell. And the reason for that is because the media goes out of their way to, you know, tell the worst possible story about our people and our culture that they can possibly tell. So as a narrator, it would be our jobs, our duties, to share the best possible story, tell or uh, narrate the best possible story about our people and our culture that we possibly can to counter how the way the media intentionally vilifies our people and uh, intentionally makes our uh, culture seem degenerate in nature. So that's why I call my target listening audience um, my narrators. And one quick little sub point I want to tack on before I move on to my next point about the narrative podcast is just like why the media does that. Why are they so, um, you know, why are they appear to be so driven to, um, you know, vilify us to make us appear that way. It's because number one, for profit, of course, um, being the most influential people on the planet, people look at our people and they want to, you know, they basically want to copy us, you know, our example, like people like basically, you know, copy us and like, the point I'm trying to make is like we're trendy. We've never, there's never not been an era where our people have not been trending. We was trending before trending was a thing. We like, we got the, uh, we got cool on lock. Like we are the quintessential elements of cool. Like people look to our example of all things cool, and they want to uh, mimic us and um, emulate us. And so therefore, anything cool is profitable. You can make money off of cool stuff like, you know, if it's popular, our people has never not been popular. We're the most popular people on the planet, you know? So that's on the uh, financial end why they intentionally um, vilify us because, you know, negative things just sell. So why not vilify the most popular people in the world? Because like all negative things sell, sex sells, um, violence sells. So, you know, let's, you know, make these popular people, you know, put our, all our eggs in one basket, make these popular people the uh, the face of degeneracy, the face of violence, um, you know, the face of corruption, because all that sells, all that you know equals money. And then the next reason why they do it is because they're uh, ran by the powers that be. 
And who are the powers that be? The powers that be is, you know, the wealthy elite class, a.k.a. wealthy white people. And the elite class, they typically vilify everybody all across the board. You know, they vilify, you know, um, Asians, they vilify, you know, low income, other low income white people, like white people not in their tax bracket. They vilify, um, you know, Italians, Irish, um, you name it. They try to uh, go out of their way to make everybody seem degenerate, low and intelligent, and uh, violent when compared to them. And why do they do this? They do this because they want to be the face of uh, morality, the face of sophistication, the face of refinement, the face of culture, the face of class, the face of decorum, the face of dignity. And to maintain this false image that they keep on, you know, perpetuating about themselves, they need to basically um, make everybody else, when compared next to them, seem the complete opposite of them. That's how they solidify, you know, their stance in the world. Um, not only that, you know, the elite class, they, um, they promote the, uh, the um, life in excess. They surround themselves with status symbols. You know, they, that's what the life they're promoting. They're promoting you have to have a mansion to be successful in life, to matter in life, you know. You have to have like exquisite, um, an exquisite jewelry collection, you know, precious diamonds and uh, other rare stones. Um, you know, that's the life, in, they represent the life in excess, the uh, mansion, the yacht, uh, the private, um, the, uh, the country clubs. Um, you know, those five-star restaurants, five-star hotels, jet-setting lifestyles. You know, that's the image that they're trying to promote. That, like, that's what you have to be. That's what you have to possess in order, yourself, in order to consider yourself successful. In order to, you know, make your life have meaning. To be prosperous in life and to, you know, get ahead. Like, you have to be, you have to do it like us. You have to be refined and elegant the way we were well, in the um, constraints of what we consider refined and elegant and, you know, sophisticated, you know. So that's basically them just trying to call shots and trying to uh, dictate to everyone else, like how they should live. Now, like I said, they do it to everybody. But they primarily do it to our people because, you know, they are afraid of our people. Out of everybody else, they fear our people the most. And the reason why they fear our people the most is because, you know, we are, you know, very influential as a people. Everybody follows our lead. Everybody copies off, off of us, borrows something, incorporates something from our culture into their culture. You know, everybody's inspired by us. And, you know, the true nature of who we are as a people, we're natural people. Um, and, you know, by nature, we don't value or need all the things that they value and the things they need. And so, like, they're scared of people, you know, because they're pushing capitalism and, uh, you know, mass spending. That's their world. And they're afraid of people will follow uh, our lead when we get back to, you know, who we truly are as a people. Um, you know, that we, we'll wake everybody else up and be like, hey, I'm not 
going to just buy this, this big, giant, expensive house just because I got enough money to. You know, I don't need this designer shirt to define who I am. I don't need this um, foreign car to, you know, validate me. You know, I don't need an object or, you know, a status symbol to make me feel important. I'm not going to spend money just to make myself feel important. And so our people, we represent the collapse of their empire because we represent, you know, inspiration, like people follow our lead. And so, you know, that's one of the key reasons why, you know, they, build a, they spend so much money, time and effort corrupting the media to, you know, vilify our people and our culture. Another very significant reason they do that is because, like I said, they're fearful of us. They're fearful of us because they're historians by nature. You know, the elite class, they study. The elite class didn't get the, to be the elite class without studying. They study money. They study how to build wealth. That's why they exist. They just solely exist to build wealth. So they study everybody else's history. And so they, they're aware of their history and they're aware of our history. And they know they could not exist without us. If there never was a us, there never would have been a them. There never would be a them. We are the direct reasons of how they acquired their financial wealth and why they developed um, their systemic power. And their biggest fear is that we, as a people, will finally just, you know, figure it out, wake up, all this, you know, petty bickering we're doing amongst them. ourselves, we'll just, like, unify and um, reclaim everything they took and everything they're currently taking from us and do to them what they've done and what they're currently doing to us. And that's why they spend so much time, invest so much time to, you know, uh, warping the narrative about, you know, original people and original people culture. That's why they're so invested into making our people look bad. Um, so yeah, the next point that I wanted, uh, that I uh, need you to know, be aware of about the narrative podcast is, is that the narrative podcast is a, a positive space. Um, so I don't do any negative gossip. I don't like drag, you know, I try to stay away from hot button issues like what's trending in the media. I will address it. However, as it pertains to our people, um, I don't do any name calling. I don't do any uh, judging. I don't try to judge people. Um, like I said, this is a positive space just to uplift and edify our people and to, you know, get us back in the uh, habit of just, you know, um, using positive uh, reinforcement as it pertains to uh, one another. You know, get on, getting online, spreading love instead of spreading hate, instead of, um, you know, uh, trade insults and slandering each other's name that we've been programmed and conditioned to do by the powers that be. Um, so, like, I just try to keep everything positive and I don't really engage. I try to stay away from engaging in ne any negative ism, any scenario where it's seeming like people's talking about somebody. You know, I just try to use this space to uplift and edify our people. However, what I don't shy away from is telling the truth, telling it, telling it, telling it like it, just telling it like it is. You know, I don't sugarcoat nothing and if I do feel somebody from our community is intentionally um, 
using their image and their likeness to intentionally uh, play up into these negative stereotypes that the media places over us, I will call said individual out on this platform. But other than that, you know, I don't do no finger pointing. I don't, you know, denigrate, participate in denigration of our people in uh, any way, shape, or form, because I feel like, you know, we get attacked from all sides. I feel like we are the only people in the world with no true allies. Like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, beneficial for pretty much everybody to, for our people to like remain right where we are, like not to advance, not to progress. Like, you know, everybody kind of benefits from it. So the last thing I want to do is add on to the, uh, you know, strife that we go through by, you know, creating an um, atmosphere where I'm, um, um, you know, gossiping and, you know, slandering another brother's or sister's name that I don't even know. And that's what, ha what gossip is, just talking about people that you don't really even know. And that's, you know, a direct root cause of the decay in our culture. You know, there's too much, much gossip going around and not enough uh, love and support going on. But, um, yeah, so I try to keep things positive around here. Um, the only, um, I do talk about current events and um, the perspective that I usually try to unpack the current events, whatever is going on in the world, whether it be globally, locally, um, nationally or internationally, you know, nationally or just something, you know, within our community, I try to uh, break it down from the bigger picture perspective, um, acknowledging, you know, negative things do happen in our community, but here's why this negative thing happened. And the why usually is centered around, you know, being systemically oppressed, being programmed and conditioned by the powers to be to, you know, interact with each other and react to each other a certain way in a negative way. You know, that's you can always link it back to that. While we do, you know, all, you know, full grown adults need to take um, responsibility for their actions, but a good 80, 90 percent of our problems in our community is caused, you know, systemically. You know, things we didn't sign up for as a people, um, people using their our vulnerabilities against us, people, um, you know, manipulating our minds and, you know, basically trying to make us an ongoing social experiment you know, controlling certain situations, controlling our money, controlling, you know, how we re interact and respond to one another. So it's all like, you know, very divisive, very systemic when negative things happen within our community. And the interesting thing to me is that we know why most of the negative things in our community happen, but yet and still, We'll always fix our mouths to be like, you know, we got to do better. We have to, um, as a people, we got to do better. We got to step it up. You know, this is unacceptable. You know, it's on us. And it is on us to, to a certain degree. But I feel, I just feel like that shouldn't always be our go-to answer is we got to do better. We got to do better. The people that's literally had everything done to them and everything taken away from them, we have to do better. So on my platform, I always present, you know, I contextualize with the bigger picture scenario when I'm breaking down, you know, whatever is happening in the world. Next order of business, um, this is a time sensitive uh, space. I try not to exceed one hour per broadcast and the reason being is because it's an all audio platform. I try to engage my listening audience. I try to, you know, just motivate everybody, um, keep everybody enthralled. 
Um, everybody captivated into the content that I'm delivering. And I cannot do that if, you know, I'm, I'm uh, boring you to sleep. So by keeping it short, sweet, to the point, I can cover a lot of subject matter. I can touch on a whole lot. And then I'm not, you know, going down rabbit holes and I'm not just droning on mindlessly. I'm not talking to be talking. So I try to keep it, you know, short, sweet, to the point. Make sure, you know, all my uh, topics I touch on, I have a speaking point and sub points to hit. And I try to time each one of them and just keep it moving on to the next one because I want my uh, content to be cohesive, you know, be building up to something and not just, you know, talking in circles. I want to make this um, informative, entertaining, and a, a pleasurable listening experience. I don't want to just bore you to sleep. So that's why I try to, you know, Keep the uh, recording time short and brief and to the point. Um, last order of business, I refer to our people. By our people, I mean black people, African American, Negro, whatever everybody else refers to us as. I refer to our people as original people on this platform. And I do it uh, for two reasons. One is the most uh, important reason. Uh, it's the historical significance bef behind it because we were and are the original people of this planet. Um, we were here thousands of years before any other race, civilization, um, ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, before any other being existed, we existed. We were here first. Um, not only were we here first, we invented pretty much every modern day invention you can think of. It can all be traced back to, you know, us some type of way and to some capacity. Every modern day convenience you can think of, we had an earlier version of it in earlier times, especially here in America, like all that stuff we learned about the Industrial Revolution is 110% lie. None of those guys invented nothing. <laughs> they owned slaves. They stole their slaves' inventions and put their name on the patent. That's the only thing they did. As a matter of fact, that's why the patent system was created. So they wouldn't give our people credit for anything. Because how do you destroy, a, um, you know, how do you destroy people? You hide their existence. You erase them from history. But yeah, that's the historical um, relevance of why I refer to our people as original people here on the Narrative Podcast. And then just, um, you know, I always got to hit you with this one. Um, you know, being original people, we existed. You know, I got to dispel this um, false narrative because, you know, historians, they always try to make slavery the quintessential uh, part of our history. They want to make slavery the most important part of our history when actually it wasn't, you know, the most definitive part of our history. Like, we had a whole legacy before slavery. So they lie about so many things about the slave trade so, like, number one, first and foremost, like I said, being original people, being here first, we existed in every single corner of the globe you can think about, think of, every single 
area of the world, every continent on the world, there was a high concentration of people with Negroid or African DNA. And we did not get to all these places via slave boats. We already existed pretty much everywhere. We voluntarily went to all these places long before the slave trade started. It was already existing on every single, you know, square inch of the continent of Asia. We was all already existed in the Mediterranean, in Australia, Europe, UK, Canada. You know, all in the Netherlands, even the North and South Pole. But especially here in the Americas and uh, Mesoamerica, any Spanish speaking nation, we was already there. You know, there's no such thing as an Afro nothing. There's no such thing as Afro Latin, Afro Mexican, Afro Asian, Afro whatever. You know? That was just like the original dark-skinned people of that region. Those was the original indigenous natives to wherever. Anything light, lighter complected than them, those people were the outsiders. Those people were the colonizers. But that's the, um, you know, especially here in the Americas, like a large majority of us already existed here, but yet they want to keep on perpetuating this myth that for hundreds of years they just kept going to the continent of Africa, transplanting Africans here. So why slavery did happen, it was brutal, it was, you know, barbarous, barbaric, I um, mean, traumatizing for us. Not all of us, you know, got to all these different places on slave ships. Um, they also, you know, telling the false narrative about how many years it went on. They got it going on for thousands of years. That didn't happen. Thousands of years. Our involvement in in the slave trade wasn't like, you know, thousands of years. It was probably like ten years max. Um, Another one is like we owned slaves. We never owned slaves. We had prisoners of war and we had indentured servants. We never owned slaves. But um, yeah, that's the, um, pretty much the gist of why I refer to our people as original people from the historical um, standpoint. And then... Um, the second reason why I do it is to uh, unify us as a people, because our people are so diverse. Um, there are so many different kinds of us, so many different, um, you know, flesh tones, shades of us, speaking so many different languages, believing in so many different things, identifying as so many different things. But the um, kind of one thing that we all have in common, the common denominator, the, the uh, common thread that binds us together is that at being at original people, we can all, all trace our original lineage back to the original point of origin for all civilization. And then also, of course, you know, we have high concentrations of Carbon, a.k.a. melanin, which also, you know, links us back to the original part, point of origin. And, you know, that's that. Now, the original point of origin can be debated, like, you know, what was Africa before it was Africa? What was Egypt before the colonizer called, called it Egypt? Not only what was it, where was it? So that's another debate for another time. But, yeah... That's why I refer to our people as original people here on the Narrative Podcast. And I think I covered everything you should know about my platform. 
And anything I may have glazed over or you're still unsure about, well, I'm well over um, 300 episodes in, so feel free to do you some binge listening to the Narrative Podcast. Remember to download this episode and our previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast wherever you get your podcast information from. And without any further ado, my narrators, I'm going to dive on into the content this evening. So, um... First and foremost, what I uh, will be presenting to you for the people unfamiliar with me in my podcast is um, during the week, I have two uh, formats for my podcast. One format is a weekday format, and then another format is my weekend format. And the two differ because the the, uh, weekday format has less sections than the weekend set, uh, format. So during the weekday, what I tend to do is I tend to share positive news articles, and then uh, um, after I share my positive new news articles, I deliver a brief commentary about something you know happening around the world. Now, why do I deliver the uh, positive news articles? Um, very simple. When I'm delivering my positive news articles, I'm basically staying uh, true to my mission statement, which is to share positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. So I do that um, to basically negate all the uh, negative news that we're constantly being bombarded with during the weekday about our people and our culture. So. That's why I share the positive news articles, just to basically um, showcase and highlight, you know, we are making strides, um, we are progressing, we are advancing, whereas in on the media, um, it's pretty much all bad all the time, with uh, some very few exceptions, like I would say, Good Morning America, that would be a an an exception to the media always portraying us in a negative light. They have some really good inspirational stories about our people on Good Morning America. Some very um, uplifting segments. But uh, for the most of the part in the media, we're always portrayed as, you know, gangbangers, thugs, pimps, whores, uh, pushers, users, um, thoughts, you know, F boys, they just, you know, they perpetuate all these negative isms and constantly bombarding us with it. This imagery, this negative imagery of our people, you know, just trying to, um, sow that degeneracy deep within our psyche. So it's basically a a form of psychological warfare. They're trying to, you know, mess with our self-esteem by trying to, you know, warp how we perceive ourselves. And they're always showing us from a negative perspective, you know, always engaging in something negative, something criminalistic, something uh, degenerate, in more uh, something uh, immoral or something illegal. So to counter that, you know, I share the positive news articles to give you know the listeners the positive frame of references about you know being leaders, being pillars in the community, um, you know, excelling in academia. Um, giving back, giving of ourselves, you know, just doing something for the greater good to advance civilization, to, uh, you know, be just the opposite of what the media says we are. That's why I share the positive uh, news articles. So now you got a gist of that, I'm going to get on into my first positive news articles on this weekday edition of the Narrative Podcast. All 
All right. First article this evening on the uh, first positive news articles this evening on the uh, weekday edition of the Narrative Podcast. The headline reads, FUBU Studios announces $450 million and uh, 30 film partnerships to champion diverse voices in entertainment. So FUBU is partnered with Studios, which is a subsidiary, a subsidiary company of Eldora Financial, and it's allocated $450 million to uh, 30 separate projects. over the next three years to champion diverse voices in entertainment. So the project is led by J. Alexander Martin and Roberto Rush Evans of FUBU Studios. The collaboration aims to create groundbreaking content that celebrates exclusive exclusivity and resonates with global audiences. So, like, you know, FUBU's doing big things. FUBU, you know, entered our lives doing big things. We know from back in the day, for us, by us, the food, we know the story of the, uh, the FUBU brothers. If you don't, you better Google it. So they're continuing their clothing line legacy which is all about positive self-images, creating positive self-images, getting people to feel good about their, um, you know, self-esteem with a brand that can uh, empower them. So now they've transcended that and they took it into the world of film. Because everybody knows a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. And that's kind of why the media, you know, portrays and vilifies us the way they do. But anyway, yeah, so FUBU's doing big things for the community. Um, they got a powerhouse behind them. I can't wait to see the um, new content that they'll be uh, streaming and uh, delivering to us. And, you know, that's definitely a step in the right direction. So let's uh, join me in the giving, you know, FUBU Studios, a warm narrative podcast, round of applause. All right, here we go. Keeping it moving. Next positive news article on the Narrative Podcast weekday edition, the headline reads, High School Senior Accepted into 231 Schools and Awarded More Than $14 Million in Scholarships. And this young sister's name is Madison Crowell. She is from Georgia. The article didn't say the name of the school. Um, she was offered $15 million in scholarship, and it, that places her in the top 5% in the United States of students, you know, that got accepted into college via scholarships. So we're always... It's always, you know, we're always innovating. We're always, you know, doing something breathtaking in the world of academia, but we hardly get the credit when we do do those things. Well, that article was really kind of brief, um, but uh, that's really all the information that was in the article. I didn't, like, take the time to, you know, see what high school she graduated from or anything like that, but 
it's still a good positive frame of reference. So join me, put your hands together for our sister, young Madison Crowell of Georgia. Didn't, the article didn't even say what part of Georgia she was from, but she's from Georgia. But uh, let's put them together for Madison Crowell and her, you know, getting accepted into uh, over 200 colleges and getting that bag. All right, next article here on the weekday edition of the Narrative Podcast, the headline reads, from teen mom, 14 mom, excuse me, and her son graduate together from Georgia State University. Pardon me again, I done messed that all the way up. I can read, just sometimes I can't read my own handwriting because I like, when I see a news article, I just take bulleted points. So the headline reads, former teen mom and her son graduate together from Georgia State University. Um, and the sister's name is India Thomas and her son, 17-year-old, Kamu Thomas. I believe it's spelled, it's pronounced India, it's with a Y, I-N-D-Y-A. But, um, yeah, so basically, um, her story is just kind of some story. Unfortunately, we hear time and time again um, in our community. Um, it's even been a, a few movies, you know, with that plot for her story, her background story. Um, pregnant, you know was having relations before her time, um, got pregnant in high school. Her parents were unsupportive. Um, you know, it was like, you know, you're going to live in this house. You're going to go by these rules. And so with that having said, at one point in time, she found herself homeless, living in the shelter, um, six, seven months um, expecting her baby boy that she graduated with. Um, at some point, she secured herself a steady job, you know, on her last trimester um, during, you know, her last semester of high school. And then after she had her son, of course, she enrolled into Georgia State and majored in uh, marketing and minored in hospitality. Now, her journey inspired her son to go to the same college she went to. And so while they didn't have any classes, of course they were interacting at home and both using each other for uh, the fuel and motivation to, you know, continue forth on their academic journey. And both ended up graduating with honors from their respective fields. Now the article didn't go on to say um, what her son was studying and I didn't, and to be fair, I didn't like do my due diligence to find out what he was studying, what he graduated for. But, you know, it's, it's still a positive news article and definitely um, a positive frame of reference worth sharing. So, um, you know, let's put them together for our sister India Thomas and her son Kamu Thomas for their recent um academic accomplishment at Georgia State University. <clears throat> so last but not least, here on this weekday edition of the Narrative Podcast, the headline reads, Heroic. 10-year-old girl 
from Indiana honored for saving two people, people's lives with quick thinking. And the young sister's name is Sis, young sister's name is Andreas Belfont, A N E R E S Belfont, B E L L E F O N C. I don't know, I spelt it. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but hey, you know, we'd be having some interesting, colorful little names to describe us. No pun intended, but. You know we be coming up with some extraordinary names, like. <laughs> but um, anyway, the article goes on to say, on January eighteenth, Andreas dialed nine one one upon finding an unconscious man and a lady near her. Her quick. Action saved lives, remaining calm, and Reyes guiding emergency responders, providing them precise details about the adults' locations and staying on the line for updates until the medics arrived. So that was very quick thinking. And I know, you know, her parents had something to do with that. You know, a responsible parent definitely trains their child um, what to do in times of emergency. And she kept her uh, composure and was able to, you know, give the res first responders an accurate location and allow them the time they needed to respond in time to give the unconscious people you know, their proper uh, medical attention that they needed, thus saving their lives. So, yeah. This article also goes on to say she was received an award from Sheriff Spoiler. The article didn't say Sheriff Spoiler's first name, so don't get mad at me. That's how it was in the article. Mr. Spoiler of Indiana. But, uh, yeah. Let's give this sister her roses. A warm narrative podcast round of applause for Andreas Belfort. And, you know, her quick thinking to save uh, two unconscious people. Well, that is it for um, the positive news articles this evening here on the Narrative Podcast. And now we're going to address a couple things, um, you know, some headlines uh, in the news, just breaking it down from our perspective. Um, so the first thing I'm going to uh, address or talk uh, briefly about all right, so I'm going to be talking about the unaliving of a KC, uh, an off duty KC uh, firefighter about two Thursdays ago. And it's a man by the name of Anthony. Santis, if I'm pronouncing his uh, last name correct. Um, so Santi was in a liquor store in the area, and apparently there was some domestic violence happening. He went to go try to break up the domestic violence, um, and I guess he got the wrong guy. So I don't know how he ended up getting into it with a brother named by the name of Javon. Um, I 
there's really no footage pertaining that to that earlier. But um, essentially, you know, Santi, uh, from the video now, Santi was throwing them hands. Santi had hands. And the brother was catching the short end of the stick. He was giving it to him, I gotta say. Santi was giving it to him. Like it's viral, you know what I'm saying? It's viral. We seen it. Santi was giving them the business. And uh, the only reason he's still alive today is because his uh, woman came out with this stick, you know? Because I think he had him in a, um, a submissive hold. I don't think from watching the video that he would have unlived Javon. But, you know, that's the tricky thing about when you put somebody in a submissive hold. Because you can very easily lose control and, um, you know, unalive the uh, person you're trying to subdue. And this is what's happen what happens a lot when the police subdue people within our neighborhood. So on this situation, it really wasn't a race thing per se, because Santi actually thought he was trying to do good. And the reason why I'm speaking on this is because this is going to tie into something else that I'm going to talk about later, later on. But um, he was trying to do the right thing. And he got an unalive trying to do the right thing. Um, you know, he was warned. She told him like two or three times to get up off him. He can't breathe. And we already know where that could have went because we done had another brother. His last words, Eric Garner's last words was, I can't breathe. So he was already, you know, Santi, he had already proven his point at this point, you know, the brother that he was like trying to subdue and wrestle, he, he had already tapped out. Like you can go on YouTube or wherever you get, like to get your, um, you know, source of, uh, media source to fact check. Like the brother had already tapped out. He already done proved whatever little point he was trying to make. He gave him the business. He was down on the ground. He gave him a couple quick wins too. In addition to already having it, having them in a uh, submission hold, he gave him a couple quick wins. Um, the sister uh, pulled out the chop, told him to stop. He wouldn't stop. Let him have it. Not here. You know what I mean? So unfortunately, you know, for the Santee family, the uh, judges have ruled pretty much it was self-defense. So it's tragic because he was a firefighter. Now, I don't really think um, race had something to do with it. Like he had a grudge against somebody black. I really, truly believe he thought in his mind, even from the witness statements, you know, argument. He was trying to stop a domestic um, type situation. And, you know, he went left. So I promise you it's tying into a point that I'm making, but, you know, that's kind of what happened. Um, was justice served? Was it, you know, justified? The sentence justified? Absolutely. Not just because it was a sister and a brother involved, but because, you know, he was told now when you're calling yourself being valiant, and defending a woman's honor, if the woman's honor whom you're defending said, that's cool, you know, I'm gonna work it out, then at that point, you're supposed to use discretion and not let your emotions get the best of you. Because if you're stepping in to stop domestic abuse, what you're trying to do is create a safe environment for the female who's being abused. So, you know, no information, no article said, you know, the guy he wrestled to the ground was the one engaged in the, the, in the domestic disturbance. 
you know. But he was told, you know, the guy tapped out. He said, I'm good. And yeah. He said, I'm good a couple of times. He was even on film saying, I'm good. You got it. You know, he was submitting. He gave up. Um, he should have let him up and uh, called it good. And if he looked like he was about to press the young lady again, then rush him again. You know, he got his little badge. He's an uh, EMT worker. They got the, like, direct, you know, line to the police. So for the submissive hold he had him on, he could have multitask, click the little thing, I'm making the citizens rest, I need some help, you know, woo-woo-woo, whatever have you, and let the police handle it from there. Now, I swear it's tying all in. Next subject I want to talk about is... None other than the Dipset Ambassador, Mr. Oh Boy, Mr. <laughs> you really mean it. I can keep on going all day, but Cameron, his latest um, CNN interview um, kind of set the internet ablaze. Um, basically, they got him in there and thought they was going to ambush him by, you know, um, asking him what he felt about Puffy's uh, recent, you know, discovery involving a uh, R&B singer, his former artist and girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, Cassandra, I believe that's a real name, but, you know, and he just, he wasn't, he didn't take the interview any type of serious, and, you know, as usual, you know, we got half the people in our community saying he, uh, disgraced all of us on camera and then the other half of the, our community is like yay that's what they get and and I'm in that percentile I'm like yay that's what they get you know because first and foremost I've said it and I say it all the time um, within our community we place way too much stock in entertainers we want entertainers to be everything but what they are, entertainers. We expect them to be like role models. We expect them to be philanthropists. We expect them to be, you know, um, professors and um, public speakers. And, and like we expect them to be everything other than an actor or an actress or a, a singer or a rapper. We expect them to be you know, just hands on with the movement. And they just entertainers, bro. They're here to entertain. You can't make an entertainment be with the movement. You know, they with it or they not. Period. Period point blank. You can't be expecting an entertainer to, you know, give back to the community. You can't expect them an uh, entertainer to build houses affordable houses for the community. You can't expect the entertainer to start after school projects, you know, for our children, build schools for our children. You can't expect the entertainer to do any of those things. If they do them, great. Great, you a good brother, you a good sister. Good, good that you, you know, feel obligated and you want to do your part. Key word, you want to do your part. You can't make them do their part. You can't expect the entertainer to do anything but entertain. If they play sports, you know, don't expect them to do nothing but run up and down. The basketball court, if they play basketball up and down the, uh, you know, football field, if they're a football player, so on and so forth. 
If they're a singer, don't expect them to do nothing but sing. If they're a rapper, don't expect them to do nothing but rap. If they're a producer, don't expect them to do, be, do, do nothing but produce. Because if you, as an individual, we all got choices. You know, we all can do things. We all got a, uh, you know, we all got an active role to play in the movement. We all got a talent skills and abilities if you know whatever social issue that our people have bothers you so bad then you take your skills and abilities and you do it don't just sit there waiting for an entertainer to do it but um anyway so I feel he gave them the uh, um, interview they deserve because as a, a journalist, if you're serious about your job, the first thing you do is do your research on the person that you're interviewing. Had they bothered doing their research on Cameron, they would have known not to ask him the questions that they asked because he's already uncandidly said it in every platform that he's been on since the whole uh, Cassie debacle. He's not even, you know, a person, he said, you know, Parbatum, I don't know Puffy, I never met him, I don't know him all like that. Um, you know, Mace is signed to him, he would be better equipped to, you know, answer questions about his character and what he witnessed while he was signed to him. I wasn't signed to Puffy. I don't know anything about the guy other than what, you know, Mace tells me. Mace was signed to Puffy. I wasn't signed to Puffy. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about Cassie. I never met Puffy or Cassie. That's basically what he's been saying in every single interview that he's been on. He said, yeah, I feel bad. It's egregious. It shouldn't happen to anybody. And it shouldn't. And it really should not happen to anybody. You know, he feels like everybody else to saw the um, the uh, uh, videotape. Or the video, excuse me, I said videotape, telling you how old I am. Um, he saw the video footage of it. Just He's like everybody else. Like, wow, that's effed up. Like, what, what did you expect him to say? Y'all sitting up here mad because you want him to sit up there and talk like T.I. or talk like David Banner, and he's not T.I. or David Banner. He's Cameron Giles from Harlem. That's who he is. He answered the question like who he is. You want to get mad because he didn't answer the questions like, he, like Mason would answer the question? So my point is y'all expect way too much. And I want to commend the brother for standing on the square and giving him the interview that them uh, devils deserve. That's the interview that they deserve. They got him on there for the BS and he gave him the BS. They want to, want to get on there and waste his time asking him questions about something he's not informed about. So what you want him to do, sit up there and talk about something he's not informed on and just like entrap himself like the rest of the artists that get on these platforms that think they smart, but they're not informed on the uh, particular topic that the interviewer is asking them about, but yet they go out their way to uh, throw their little two cents in anyway when they don't even know what's going on. So, yeah, he answered it like he was supposed to. He didn't give him nothing because he didn't have anything. And then his follow up interviews, he said just why he uh, went on national TV and showed his backside is because, you know, he, they don't never ask him positive questions. Both of them, um, Cameron and Mace, they do positive things for the community. 
They never ask them, you know, what type of events, charitable events they're hosting or, you know, what's going on in your catalog. They just go right to the right to the BS. And so he was like, well, if y'all want to go right to the BS, I'm going to follow suit and give y'all the BS. And so now, doubling down, the next time you have me on here, you'll follow suit and ask me in the correct format. Ask me everything I got going on as an artist. What's, what's, what's your new... That's how you should have built up the interview. So how long you been in the industry and, you know... For those people that don't know, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get your record deal? And what inspires you? Why, or why do you keep going on? And what motivates, you know, Mr. Giles today? And it, he, they probably would have got a better interview. He could have got a, more out of them. You know what I mean? But when you just so one dimensional with your questions, like, of course. You want to talk like that? Of course. What you mean? So like, yeah, I don't feel he disgraced our people. I felt like he was just being um, uh, genuine, being honest, being himself. And again, he's not obligated to, you know, represent our people, represent our problems. But it's good that he does give back. You know, it's good that he does provide positive opportunities for people within our community. Um, matter of fact, the uh, their co-host, you know, he put on, you know, she was a college intern. She got her own platform now worth millions of dollars. So she's a brand now. She's a brand ambassador. She was just an accompaniment to their show. Now she's a shot caller because he put her on and he got a history of putting people on. But they don't want to talk about all the people he put on and all the positive things he's done for the community. They want to just, you know, try to uh, entrap him and make him seem ignorant and unintelligent when, you know, they're trying to bait him with some negative questions. And he didn't take the bait. And so now I'm about to tell you, you know, where these two stories, how they all interconnect to, you know, how I'm going to finish up with my uh, speaking point this evening which is, of course, ain't no secret, uh, the videotape. So first and foremost, before I get into that, of course, we know I did a, a weekend episode of the Narrative Podcast where my perspective was, um, you know, what if uh, Cassie's the villain in this story? And that's just the opposing view that I pre, uh, presented to the listening audience. Like, what if Cassie's the villain in the story? What if everybody offering her unsolicited opinion is wrong? What if, uh, you know, she fabricated this whole thing? And I said the what if scenario, because like, like at that point in time before the video surfaced, it was what if. Um, so I'm not trying to, you know... Go back, because I said in, I also said within my, um, you know, broadcast, if he did do it, he's disgusting, he's vile, and he's wretched and all that. As a man, he's a disgrace as a man and all that. So I, I covered all my bases, but I feel the main takeaway I wanted people um, to get that I didn't really touch on was the hypocrisy um, surrounding the whole situation. And I mean the hypocrisy within our community because everybody's so online, they're so gallant, they're so cavalier, you know, they're so honorable, you know, with their little quotes, you know, any man that hits the woman and then, you know, they turn the meme into everything. So when the tape came out, everybody was sucking on Layton, keep your hands to yourself, all the content creators, they was doing the little skits, keep your hands to yourself, keep your hands to yourself, da-da-da. But meanwhile, as a community, within our culture, from our people, you know, we don't check 
the ditties in our community. We don't check the ditties in our family. You know, we'll sit up there and watch our daughter, our son, grandson, nephew, little cousin, big cousin, uncle, dad, grandpa, physically abuse a woman, and we won't say nothing. Or, we, or rather, the thing we do say, it ain't none of my business. It ain't got nothing to do with me. That's his woman. He got to deal with that. No, we don't do that. We ain't never been to a cookout. And cousin, little brother, little cousin, um, somebody, some male in the family, bring his chick that he just started dating to the uh, family cookout. And she embarrassing the heck out of him. She's dressed like a hoochie mama. And she's like belligerently drunk. She starts flirting with other people in the family. Other male members in the family get to twerking. He done yoked her up around the corner, you know, aggressively. And then, you know, by the night, drags on. He done just sit up there and dog walked her in a public park in front of everybody. And ain't nobody in the family you know, pulled him off her, called the police or nothing. Not just there um, in church, at the mosque, um, at the synagogue, at the temple. We witness abuse and don't say nothing, turn the blind eye and don't say nothing. You know, stop me when I'm lying. But then some video coverage comes up, and now everybody's super moral. You know? And it ain't just with men, it's with our women too. I want to hear the conversation. If you're married or dating a woman, and you're like talking to your whoever you're messing with, your wife or your girlfriend, I'd be like, oh, yo. I want to hear what your girlfriend says in this scenario, or your wife or whoever. Yo, I'm going to pull over right quick. Why, baby? Oh, this dude is sitting up here. He wilding. He's stopping this lady out. Yo, I'm going to get out the car right now, and I'm going to jump out, and I'm going to go break this up. I want to hear your wife or your girlfriend's, you know, retort to that. What you mean? That ain't got nothing to do with you. You better come on over here. You better, you better, you better not. You better call the daggone police and let them do what they do. And come on over here to uh, your family you got at home. You don't know her. But online. We so honor bound, we so honorable and cavalier and gallant, we got the most to say about Mr. Combs and his situation with this uh, pertaining to this young lady and um, all the alleged victims as well. We got everything to say, but we don't say nothing to to the uh, domestic violence we see and encounter every single day in our community. We ain't got nothing to say. Or rather, the one thing we do say, I'm minding my own business. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't know her. I ain't ain't messing with her. Shoot, she probably provoked it. That's what we always say when we go on and mind our own business. You know, we some minding our own business MOFs. But now... Everybody wants to be righteous. And you know why they want to be righteous? Is because it's some bread in it. It's a bag. It's like we don't want to be righteous until there's something in it for us. It's either the bag or these days people would take um, being famous over the bag. They don't want to 
stand on principles, morals, and integrity unless there's something in it for them. And it's usually money or, you know, being on all these talk shows, you know, saying stuff people want to hear and you're famous. Then you go viral for saying stuff people want to hear and then you're a hero in that regard. So it's got to be one or the other or quite possibly both. But one thing's for sure, two things for certain. It got to be something in it for you for you to care. And I feel like didn't nobody in our community care until the video surfaced. Because this has been going on for years. And like when I said, when the story first broke, you know, we are like at, at times our people are really hypocritic. Because there's so many entertainers in the entertainment industry that know him. Understand me? Like the rest of us, we spe we, we, we speculating. We pontificating with may, what may not be. I don't know him. I ain't never met him. I don't know him other than, you know, the mu music videos and his little dance and, and, and take that, take that. That's all I know him from. And that's how a whole lot of other entertainers know him from. But there's like entertainers, rappers, R&B singers that know him, know him and seen it. A few of them participating in it. But ain't never said nothing. Now all of a sudden they want to say something. It been going on for years. So the tape was in 2016. He was dating her like about three years prior to that tape. Either way, on the upward from three to five years prior to the two, 206, uh, 2016 tape, there was a uh, I keep on saying tape, audio clip or video clip that was uh, circulate. They're circulating on the web now. And now we got all these other mediums that want to do a documentary style um, lynching of Puffy. A documentary style lynching of Puffy. They all want to do some type of little expose, you know, uh, surviving Puffy now. Because again, they only want to be righteous when there's some money involved in it. If there wasn't no money involved, they wouldn't care. They don't, they don't care about Cassie. They don't care about all these other alleged victims. They just care about, you know, um, opportunity. They want traction on their project. They want some money. And that's like a hot button issue right now. So all the blogs are still going nuts. All the podcasts are going nuts. You know, it's still a, a social media blitz concerning this topic. And nobody cared until opportunity presented itself. So another quick little bombshell I'm going to drop. You know, now everybody's um, a, a, a therapist and a philosopher, you know, giving their account of what a man is and saying, Puffy ain't no man. He ain't no man. He's a coward. He's a, he, he, he a coward. He ain't no man. He ain't no man. Yo, let me tell you about manhood. Manhood is taking accountability for your own actions at all given times, not blaming things outside of you for any shortcomings you may have. Manhood is handling your responsibility. Manhood is take bringing order to your life in the world around you, anything, anything in your circumference, you bring order and discipline to that environment. Being a man means exercising, you know, discipline. Being a man means having wherewithal, 
Here, with being a man means having resolve. Being man, being a man means being a protector and being a provider. Being a man means having just a natural innate ability to discern. Being prideful, but then knowing when to kick your pride to the side and admitting when you need help with something. That's manhood. And then to being a righteous man, that's everything I just named times 10. And so y'all sitting up there calling Puffy a coward and da 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 da. Guess what? The coward apologized. So, whether or not you believe his apology, whether or not you accept his apology, the only person that got to accept his apology is Cassie. That's the only person that got to accept his apology, which you think is irrelevant. What you think of his sincerity is irrelevant. Because it's easy to sit up there on the computer and to point your finger at everybody else's um, shortcomings, at everybody else's mistakes. But can you, as a man, look at yourself and take accountability for what you do? Everybody got their finger pointing at Puffy. He's a freak and he's a he's a, a fruity pop and he's a this and he's a that and he's a this and that 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 that. And he but like yo, you got to be liberal with the blame because everybody in their circumference, everybody in this circle, they deserve blame too. There's people, there's producers, agents, bodyguards. Um, you know, you name a person in the industry he's connected to, they at some point in time witnessed to that, and for whatever reason, they didn't say nothing. But now all of a sudden they're saying something. So why didn't you say something when he did it? But now you want to be a man online and call this other man a coward for something he did um, that you witnessed and you didn't say nothing. You had the opportunity to, to, you know, pull him off of her. You had, like, you, like allegedly there have been a million Cassies since that, um, you know, clip aired. So there have been countless situations. So in all them situations, not one so-called air quotes man stepped to this brother and, you know, pulled him off to the side and like, brother, you can't be doing that. I love you, you can't do that. But some of y'all would. Some of y'all would. Some of y'all wouldn't check your uncle or your cousin or your little brother or your big brother or your nephew or your grandson about putting his hands on women. Y'all sit up there and say, it ain't none of my business. It ain't got nothing to do with me. You don't want to got to tell the man, shoot. He be all right when he do enough jail time. But if he cares about somebody, you say, hey, you're wrong, pull him off to the side. And then newsflash for all the judges out there, domestic uh, violence is a learned behavior. So the big question is, where did he learn to do this from? Where did he learn to abuse women like that from? Was he already abusing women when he was up underneath Steve Stout and Andre Harrell, or did he start abusing women after he got up underneath Clyde Davis? Where did the abuse trail start? Where did, what, like, when did he start acting weird, start drugging people and stuff? Remember I said I always, like, focus on the why? 
when we have you know, negative things happen within our community, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves before we just jump online giving our unsolicited opinion about stuff we don't even know. We don't know that guy. We don't know what keeps him up at night. We don't know that dude. You know, that's your business. If you get a little spying, a whole lot of uh, artists and, you know, celebrities say, I never messed with him. He always just creeped me out and I stayed away from him. And, oh, look, see, that's why I told you. I know I felt it down in my spirit that it was a scumbag. Yo, that scumbag is your nephew. That scumbag is your uh, cousin. That scumbag is your son, your grandson. We got a scumbag like that within close proximity of us, but we ain't saying nothing to them. Unless it's something in it for us to say something to them. Unless, you know, because that's how opportunistic we are. That's how fleeting our righteousness is. But yeah, another point that I wanted to touch on, another bombshell I wanted to drop on, a lot of people saying, it's over, it's over. That's all I'm seeing online. It's over for Puffy. It's over for Puffy. It's over for him. It's over. The tape came out, it's over. The tape came out, it's over. And, you know, the last uh, broadcast I did, I said, no, it's not over. But you know what? I want to uh, uh, retract my statement. It is over. It's over for him. You know why it's over for him? Because he settled out. She got her money. And then he's also made an apology. It's over. You can only apologize once. Whether you believe the apology is sincere or not, after somebody apologizes for wronging you, it's over. <clears throat> you can't expect somebody to just keep on apologizing and apologizing and apologizing every single time they see you. You accept the apology or you don't. And that's just what it is. It sounds cold-blooded, but that's life. You know, I'm very sorry that this sister went through all them things. I'm very sorry that so many people thought, you know, she wasn't telling the truth. But unfortunately, in the entertainment industry, that type of thing does happen. All the um, she devils out there kind of messed it up for her, getting the help that she needed at the time when she needed it. Because there's so many she devils out there that prey on these entertainers, get with them just so they can concoct a story that, you know, they either put a, try to put a baby on them or get up, get up uh, underneath these gossip mongers and said the celebrity gave them an STD or, you know, something. Or just like their big over, overall... Um, Mission is to uh, run their pockets any type of way possible. They're going to create some gossip, something they know they ain't true. So, you know, the celebrity will just settle out of court with them so they can get a quick, easy bag. And yes, there are females out there just like that. Now, how it looked bad for Cassie is because she wasn't physically attracted to Puffy she didn't think the guy was handsome. Um, his personality, she didn't like his personality. She was clearly there for the bag, clearly. It wasn't no secret that her relationship, she was there for the bag. She didn't find him charming or handsome or intelligent or nothing. She was there exclusively for the bag. She was there exclusively because he could foster her career as an R&B singer. That's why she was dating him initially. True, she didn't sign up for all the abuse that came with it, but she was a consensual adult and her motives were not pure. She didn't date him because 
you know, she was smitten by his charm. She didn't date with him because she thought he was um, attractive or handsome or none of that. She dated him because of what he could potentially do for her. And this is the part where everybody gets mad at me for telling the truth. But anytime you build a foundation on something that isn't solid, or a lie, you know, it's not going to turn out good. It's, never, it's going to turn out bad. It's going to turn out all bad. You know, if your uh, motives aren't, uh, your intentions and motives aren't pure, whatever you call yourself trying to build is going to crumble. It's going to crumble. If you don't if your motives aren't pure, if your intentions aren't aligned up on the side of righteousness, it's going to crumble. Whatever you're calling yourself building, if you have ill intentions, if you you know you're not being uh, stand up and honest, it's going to crumble. It's going to crumble and collapse, and that's exactly what happened in that particular situation. Um, she was a victim of you know domestic abuse, but. If her intentions was pure, there's a good 99% chance that they wouldn't have played out like that. If she actually liked or loved him, it's a good chance it probably wouldn't have, it's a good chance it probably would have just been a mutual breakup. It's just like, we're two different people. You know, it just might have ended up like that. Might have. But if the guy, you know, he's sick, he got a problem, he says he's getting therapy, at this point, who's anybody to judge? Because, like, we can't judge nobody. When we got puffies in our neighborhood, we ain't addressing. Puffies in our family that we ain't addressing, that we turn the blind eye, eye to. So, yeah. Domestic abuse is a learned behavior. Um, all these judges online, everybody is worthy of redemption. You definitely got the means to get therapy. Like, anger is real. If you suppress anger, it will destroy you. Um, you know, that's like, I ain't making excuses for the brother, like I said. Um, when I talked about it uh, last time, I'm not caping for that dude as an entertainer. He's not one of my favorite entertainers. Like, I don't like a single project he ever been involved with. Like, beat wise, beat production wise, I don't think he got the illest beats. We already know he can't rhyme. Lord knows we can't. He can't act. Like, oh my God, a raisin in the sun, bro. Why would they even let him do that? Why would y'all let him defile a classic like that? Like nobody said nothing. They just. Thought it was a good idea to let him be in the, in the race in the, in the sun. Like, he just butchered the Alex Haley classic. Like, but anyway, you know, everybody's worthy of redemption. He's getting therapy. Like, what more do you want? I know what you want, but you're not going to get what you want. Want You want to see the on-air destruction of Diddy. And like it or not, he's amassed too much wealth to be destroyed the way you want him destroyed. To be penniless and to, you know, be incarcerated. Like the only powers that can deal with him right now is the almighty creator and like however... You know, the creator decides to deal with him. That's the way he's going to get dealt with. Because, like, us human beings, the only way the uh, government can deal with him right now is to unalive him. He's not going to do no jail time, bro. He's not going to go bankrupt. He's not going to go do no jail time. So you just, you sitting around waiting on uh, the snake venom to kick in and it's not going to do it. That's what they say revenge is like. Revenge is like snake venom. You, you want to end up, 
you know, you're going to end up passing away before the snake venom kicks in. Well, that's it and that's all for this edition of the Narrative Podcast. Join me again, uh, you know, later on this week. I don't know if it's tomorrow or Friday, but definitely join me on uh, this week again for another edition of the Narrative Podcast, weekday edition, and then most definitely this weekend, for the weekend edition of the narrative podcast. Now, how the two differ, the format is like on the weekends. It's just a little bit longer. I have more sections. So you see during the weekday, I got the um, the highlight section and commentary. Or the, uh, excuse me, the um, articles, the positive news articles and commentary. I just have two sections. So... The weekend edition, what I do is I swapped out the uh, positive news articles for something I call a highlight section. And what I do there is like I basically promote, you know, original people owned and operated businesses. And then after that is a spotlight section to replace the. uh, Um commentary section and then um, I got a health and wellness section and then I got my commentary section and then finally I close out with a wise word of wisdom which does remind me I got so long winded on that um, you know breaking down oh boy I did forget my wise word of wisdom this weekend but thankfully, I got it. Still got it in the notes, and it's kind of, sort of, does apply. Um, my wise word of wisdom, my final thought or final word. That's how I end my uh, weekend editions. Um, so my final word of the day is focus. You know that is what our people is lacking, is focus. We're too focused on celebrity gossip and celebrity news to unify and come together and build constructively as a uh, tribe because we so divided because we're not focusing in the areas we need to focus on. So to focus, to have proper focus, one must focus on themselves. Focus on all the things you want to achieve in your life. Focus on all the things you want to have in your world. And when you focus on changing your world, then the world changes. But in order to bring about change, you must focus. And that's my final word of the day. Focus, y'all. Stay focused. Stop getting off, putting and off track with this freaking gossip. All right, y'all. That's it and that's all. So like I said, um, I broadcast a couple of times, uh, at least two to three times a week during the weekday. It's just been two so far, but I, uh, I, I plan on you know, trying to do as many days that I have available during the weekday for more weekday uploads of the narrative podcast. But for right now, it's just two. So, you know, keep your ears tuned in to whatever podcast that you uh, have, whatever podcast you subscribe to. Stay tuned into that. And then also. So, yeah, just. um Wherever you get your podcast information from, just keep an uh, ear out for that. For my uh, latest upload, um, this platform that I'm on, it automatically uploads to uh, YouTube and X. So that will be your best bet to uh, catch 
the latest upload of the Narrative Podcast. Follow me on YouTube, Halsey Allen on YouTube, and Halsey Allen at I Stay Good on X, and you will be in the loop with the latest upload of the Narrative Podcast, wherever you get your podcast information from. And remember to download this episode and our previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast. Um, Also, so out of the two, I would say to do the downloads, download it from X. Because you got to, from X, follow me on X and, uh, you know, download it. It's just easier to navigate on there. Like you will see the whole panel, the whole setup. You will see the uh, download button. You see the like button, you see the comment button, the comment box, and it's just more accessible on YouTube. It's just like, you know, the audio clip of the um, episode, but the, uh, you know, the link on X, you'll be able to actually download it, like it, comment it, and share it, and all that. But um, follow me on both platforms. Um, and you'll be notified with the most recent episode upload of the Narrative Podcast. So follow me on YouTube, Harzi Allen on YouTube, subscribe, notification all, and then follow me on X as well for the most recent episode of the Narrative Podcast. And remember to download this episode and our previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast, wherever you get your podcast information from. Also, I've written a book of poetry titled The Black Card. The Black Card um, is available on a a platform called Poetizer.com. Poetizer.com is a a medium for writers, uh, specifically poets, people that like to write poetry. Um, but they also accept people to um, write novels and short stories, compositions and essays. But uh, they mainly promote poetry on that uh, site. What they have is a feature which allows people that share their work on that site to convert their work into a, a book. So they have a virtual online bookstore. And, um, you know, you can go purchase books on their virtual online bookstore. So, like, purchase my book that I wrote on Poetizer.com. It's called The Black Card. Um, And The Black Card basically is a 30-page book of poetry. Um, The unique thing about it is just basically a snapshot, an all-encompassing look at us as a people. And um, it captures everything we experience as a people, both positive and negative. Um, just, you know, everything that is our essence. So, like, definitely go check that out on Poetizer.com's virtual online bookstore. Um, it'll make a great coffee table read, travel book, or gift. If you're looking to get into poetry, if you like poetry, looking to get into poetry, go on to Poetizer.com in their uh, virtual bookstore and purchase my book, The Black Card, written by me, Halsey Allen, or get your black card revoked. Um, So speaking of poetry, I have a poetry blog on blogger.com called Halsey's Poetry Corner. Um, What that is is a virtual uh, uh, collection of uh, my personal poems that I write. All the poems on there are just spontaneous. They're written in the moment. Um, That's the thing that makes makes them unique is that they're just like, you know, totally off the cuff. I didn't, you know, contemplate on the title or the subject matter. Another unique thing about them is it's so, you know, intricate and, uh, you know, precise. It creates the illusion that, you know, I drafted them and then posted them on. But it's like I said, it's completely spontaneous. Um, The tagline for my uh, poetry blog on blogger.com is Harz's Poetry Corner. Poetry with a passion, poetry for all occasions. And when you read one of uh, my poems on Harz's Poetry Corner blog, 
you know, you would see exactly what I mean by the tagline. It's literally like you will uh, find a poem that you that will resonate with you. You know, whatever instance in life that you're going through. Um, it's really something for everybody, not just my people, just, you know, anybody going through anything, anything in life. You will find a poem on that poetry blog that will resonate with you. So go check that out on blogger.com at www.mrhawsesblogs.com. And the name of my poetry blog, again, is Hawses Poetry Corner Blog, or Hawses Poetry Corner, excuse me. And how you support it is basically like either share the link to Hawses Poetry Corner, which is www.mrhawsesblogs.com, or a poem featured on Hawses Poetry Corner across all, you know, digital platforms. Well, that's all I got to uh, promote. I will be promoting more stuff as I do more stuff. But um, for all intents and purposes, you know, check me out later on this week and definitely this weekend. Keep it positive. Keep it positive. Keep it positive. Promote positivity. Promote positivity. Promote positivity. Family, use your platforms to promote positivity. That's what the narrative podcast is all about, promoting positivity. So yeah, but this episode of the narrative podcast definitely is a wrap. Um, I'm Harzi Allen. I'm changing the narrative. One episode at a time, I'm asking you to help me change the narrative by becoming a narrator. And while I'm changing the narrative on my end, one episode at a time as a narrator, you can help me change the narrative on your end, one social media post at a time. Until next time, Halsey Allen and the Narrative Podcast, signing off, and it's like that. is changing the narrative one episode at a time.